John, hey, Grant, you, you, Grant, you, you are the biggest bullshit artist on the planet. Why are you trying to diminish everybody in the room? No, just you, Grant, because you're a you? man. <laughs> I'll say this on this room right now. I believe that in the next year, Grant Cardone will be found person? guilty John. of fraud. I believe that Grant Cardone will be found guilty of fraud, and I want nothing to do with it. If you're someone who uses Instagram Reels or TikTok or even YouTube Shorts, you might be aware of a recent phenomena that's actually pretty interesting and somewhat ironic. It would be part of the new epidemic that is affecting the world right now, which is yapping. There is an ironic case where these short videos exist, and yet there's a lot of information that are being portrayed in these videos that are completely not essential, completely boring, and essentially a waste of time, but ironically, because they're short enough, you usually give it a chance and watch through it until you come to a video like this and realize you made a big mistake by watching it. What's a water, bottle of water that's really good you recommend? Uh, you can do Mountain Valley spring water. You can do Avian. Avian. I love Avian. Yeah, those are good ones. Tastes okay. good. Fiji? No. Mm. It's okay. Nope. Now, of course, you don't have to watch these videos, and eventually over time, you'll build your own filtering system where you skip the yaponomics. But every once in a while, you'll find a video that pulls you in. Perhaps it's interesting enough, or perhaps you are illiterate to the internet enough to actually believe some of these individuals when they say that they are experts at dating, experts at the market, experts at relationships, or experts at something that you may perhaps be interested in. I personally have found a love-hate relationship with this where some things are so boring and some things are just so grimy and nasty and in my opinion borderline gay and I don't know why but some of the most alpha male content I've seen is some of the gayest things I've ever seen where it's unironically describing a loving male-on-male -male relationship like the dude who talks about the perfect dinner date that he made with Andrew Tate's brother. Tristan Tate pulled up a video, his favorite whiskey, Johnny Walker. What do I do at Duty Free? Johnny Walker. That night, sipping the Johnny Walker in the war room by myself with him, chilling. Why? I studied, bro. I knew I knew what he liked. Dude, every guy that I want to get into the room with, I know as much as I can about them. Like, I'll go up and be like, yo, bro, how did the... And I'll drop something that he did last week. How was it? Oh, shit, this guy's paying attention. Like, I cannot skip this video ever. Like, every time I watch it, I just think to myself, like, dude figured out this guy likes Johnny Walker. Dude figured out what this guy likes. Dude figured out that this guy likes to have nice hot foot rubs on a midsummer's eve. Dude figured out he likes to hold hands and kiss lovingly in front of the fireplace. I'm like, bro, this is more effort than most people put into a Valentine's anniversary. This is absolutely positively insane. But every single time I watch the video, every single time I look at the comments, and every single time I laugh because people are making fun of him for being a Johnny Walker simp. But one thing that I think that is beautiful about this whole TikTok brain rot Instagram reel economy me is that it's very fragile in all reality if you have an iq above one you're going to see these videos and realize that they're yappers they're scammers they're individuals who literally just go around for the purpose of grifting and making money off people by saying that they make money but in reality they teach a discord course or they teach an online course or they teach a course in person where they yell at you and make you do push-ups because you're a piece of garbage right bro are you really yawning Come on, give us 25 push-ups. We're gonna change your life and you're in here yawning. Why is he yawning? Because learning's a bitch, but being broke and not having your team following you and not breaking records, that's a bitch too, right? But in all reality, these people don't have much merit when it comes to the actual world of business. Now, one of these individuals goes by the name of Grant Cardone. Now, Grant Cardone is a man who's about 50 or 60. He has the same ego and the same attentions needs as a 14 year old white girl who basically puts videos out on the internet. He wants people to watch them. He wants people to respect him. He's basically like Fredo Corleone from The Godfather where he screams that he's smart. He's a smart individual. He should be respected as a trader and a businessman. And that really this individual yearns for people to think that he's smart. He's an intelligent business person. And that because he owns real estate and he won't stop yapping about it, that he's someone who is to be trusted with your money and someone who you should pay for courses as well as to go into business with. Now granted, this individual does have a business, he does have a private jet, he does have these monetary pieces, but it's very cringe the way he approaches it where he essentially goes on a yapping spree trying to convince people to subscribe to his mind and his ideology where he is an individual who owns real estate but tells people they should only rent 
He's an individual that does not have any liquid assets, but tells people don't invest in your 401k. And ironically enough, he's someone who regularly talks about the younger generation and how they're out of touch with reality and online too much, yet for some reason is forcing his young daughter to go online and do podcasts and online content with him and pushing her out there more and more, basically grooming her to be a future yapper. But what made me so happy and actually was a feeling of ecstasy was seeing Grant Cardone get undressed and literally ideologically, physiologically, as well as economically bodied by an actual CEO, an actual business model, which is one of the best business moguls, the ex-CEO of T-Mobile. And it was actually on a Twitter Spaces thread where Grant Cardone was doing his usual yap fest, just yap, 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 and talking about how he's a great businessman, people should go up in business with him. He's one of the best business people ever, business, business, business. And the CEO of T-Mobile actually said, you know what, Grant, why don't you shut the f up? Because to be honest, you don't know what you're talking about. You are a literal grifter, scammer, piece of garbage, and multiple times has begged me to go into business with you, but I will never do that because you are not a business person. You're a grifter. And it was beautiful. Wow, <laughs> man. I'll say this on this room right now. I believe that in the next year, Grant Cardone you will be found person? guilty God. of fraud. I believe that Grant Cardone will be found guilty of fraud, and I want nothing to do with it. John, do you know of anybody that I have been fraudulent to? I think you're. I think you're a fake. Uh, you know, somebody that says I used to be an addict, and I think you're fake. That's my my okay, opinion. But, but but thank you. But you've never done business with me. You've never given. And me I wouldn't anything. do We've business with anything. you, Grant. You've been begging yeah, me but, to do business with you for five years, and I won't. Uh. Uh, I don't think I've ever offered you any money to do anything or any partnership. By the way, he's not yeah. a billionaire. Yeah. He doesn't have close ahead, to John. a billion dollars. And he is How do you know somebody, that, How do you know somebody How here. Do you know he, he's do you somebody know that, who is self-promoting. And if you, you go that, to the world, go to the world of CNBC, go to CNN, go to the world, ask about Grant Cardone. He doesn't exist. He doesn't exist. He doesn't exist. He doesn't exist. And I think what's so amazing about this is that you can tell Grant Cardone, despite the fact that he's 60 plus, despite the fact that he's a father, despite the fact that he's a role model to certain individuals, despite the fact that he's an owner of a business, he had a moment where he went back to his 12 year old self, where his dad was yelling at him, where he felt like he was out of control. He felt like he had nothing to say. He felt like he needed someone to stand up and defend him because he could not muster enough ego and enough delusion to stand on business and say that he's actually a legitimate business person and much like Fredo Corleone is smart. And he literally ends up backpedaling a bit and basically saying that what the CEO is saying is not true. And they try to get to a simple argument of not uh uh huh. And it is so beautiful to see. It's one of these things where you see individuals online talk so much. They just talk, 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 but very rarely really walk the walk. And just seeing him get undressed and then have to pull back was actually very delicious. I couldn't even say that without smiling at the end because you know it's so no, much bullshit. I could Grant. hear you smiling, John. John, John, the whole room could hear you Grant, fucking almost hey, cracking Grant, up because you know that's Grant, such bullshit. Grant, listen, Grant, you with a straight face talk about wealth. You talk about people that have opulence. You talk about, and you have more fucking homes and helicopters and planes than any person on the planet. Yet you talk about yeah, the same kind of topic. Come on, my, come on, man. I, I don't know what you want me to say. I, I've, I've worked hard. I've been successful, John. I'm not going to apologize for that. But, but I'm also, that doesn't mean I have to be disconnected from the everyday person that's out there trying to get the American dream, trying to make the right moves, trying to take care of their families. And that's the difference between me and you. You're just a rich guy with a bunch of homes. Some what company's going to pay you $30 million a year. You take no risk. You just walk in. You get a big fucking desk and a, and a, and a big ivory tower and a big title. And you get to be hey, uh, hey. in the news every day. I wish I had your license. Yeah. Hey, Grant, by the way, uh, I have taken bankrupt companies and turned them around. I've gone through the Congress. I've gone through the Senate. You have no fucking idea what it takes to turn around a gigantic company. 
Now, to be fair, I don't think Grant Cardone is one of the worst drifters. I don't think he's a terrible person. I do hate that he yaps all the time. I do hate that he is part of this new generation of individuals who basically copy paste the Andrew Tate business model of yap, yap, yapping, and then having their fans and business colleagues, aka Discord kitties, push their content online to as many accounts as possible in order to reach a wide audience as possible. I think it's something that is very cringeworthy. It's something that's very stupid. It's something that essentially just catches people off guard if they're really not internet literate to the point that they're actually believing some guy that owns nothing but real estate that you should rent and you should follow his business ethics because he's a genius. But it's just so amazing to know that these individuals that are online, that yap, 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 if they really were business geniuses, if they really were these amazing individuals, the free market is open. The Dow is there. The NASDAQ is sitting right there. The market is there for the taking. You can go be the next Oracle of Omaha. There is no such thing as yapping your way into an existence of greatness. You can go do that. So for all these people that just talk, 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 it's pretty funny to see that most people don't walk the walk. And this is something that's unfortunate. It's not something that is not present in just the economic aspect. It's something that exists in literally in every aspect of online content, especially the shorts content, where it's essentially a yapping epidemic where most people don't look for experts or individuals that are actually very savvy. I actually was surprised to see that Jay Cutler was making content online, and he's not that popular because people don't push his content and spam it. And people don't realize he was a literal gold medal champion multiple times at the Arnold Classic. And that because he's not yapping and saying how great he is, people often disregard it and move over it. So I think it's actually a part of the audience issue as well, where you have these individuals that yap about how great they are, the audience then attaches to it, even if they are a dumb audience, and from there they're able to continue to move on like a giant wheel with a school of fish following them by their side. So I think it's something to take into consideration. The next time you see someone who is not a low IQ grifter, leave a comment, like it, push it, thumbs up it, whatever the hell you need to do to push the content out. Because at this point in time, there's more people talking about how great they are as opposed to actually doing things that are great. At the end of every single video, make sure you ask people to rate and subscribe to your content. It makes them feel like they're involved even though they're really not. And most importantly, make sure they comment on every single video. If you have to, disguise it. You know, call it something like the question of the day. And really make them think you're going to really read it when you really don't have to. Ha ha ha!